In this video, I'll be looking at 1.5 thirds. 1.5 represents chapter 1, section 5 of the Pearson A Level Maths Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. I'm going to start off this section by explaining what a third is. Here is the definition. If n is an integer such that n is not a square number, then any multiple of square root n is called a third. Let's have a look at some examples. Square root of 2. 2 is an integer, but 2 is not a square number, hence square root of 2 is a third. 3 is square root 2. We know that square root 2 is a third. 3 square root 2 is a multiple of square root 2, hence 3 square root 2 is a third. Square root of 13. 13 is an integer, but 13 is not a square number, hence square root of 13 is a third. Minus 7 square root 13. We know that square root 13 is a third, minus 7 square root 13 is a multiple of square root 13, hence minus 7 square root 13 is a third. What about square root of 64? 64 is a square number, hence square root of 64 is not a third. Square root of 64 is equal to 8. Another example, square root of 81. 81 is a square number, hence square root of 81 is not a third. Square root of 81 is equal to 9. Now I'm going to go through the definition of an irrational number. An irrational number is a number that can't be written in the form a over b where a is an integer and b is an integer b is not equal to zero let's have a look at some examples of an irrational number okay square root two now square root two can be written as square root two over 1. 1 is an integer, but square root 2 is not an integer, hence square root 2 is an irrational number. Another example, pi. Pi can be written as pi over 1. 1 is an integer, but pi is not an integer, hence pi is an irrational number. Okay, now I'm going to go through third rules. There are two major rules that you need to know for the exam. The first one is the multiplication rule. The second one is the division rule. So we have third rules. Number one, if you have the square root of AB, this is equal to the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B. Number two, if you have the square root of A over B, this is equal to square root of A divided by square root of B. Now, in general, if you take the square root of A and you square it, this is equal to A. Here is example number one. Simplify part A, B, C, D and E. Now, there are two major things that we need to look out for when we simplify square roots. Number one. If the number inside the square root is a prime number, that particular square root cannot be simplified further. Number two, the number inside the square root, you could try and split it as a product of two numbers where one of the number is a square number. That is our target. So let's start off with part A. We've got square root 90. Now 90 can be written as a product of 9 and 10. 
using the multiplication rule for thirds, this can be split into square root 9 multiplied by square root 10. The square root of 9 is 3 multiplied by the square root of 10. That there is in its simplest form. Moving on to part B. The square root of 27. 27 can be written as a product of 9 and 3. Remember our target is to ensure that one of the numbers in the product is a square number. In this particular case, 9 is a square number. All over 3. We can use the multiplication rule for said to split this one over here into square root 9 multiplied by square root 3. All over 3. Square root of 9 is 3. So we have 3 square root 3 over 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we can cancel out to give us square root of 3. Square root of 3 is in its simplest form. Moving on to part C. Now over here, we can use the division rule for thirds. We can rewrite this as the square root of 44 over 11. Now 44 divided by 11 is just 4. So we have square root of 4, which is just 2. The other way which you can tackle part C is to use the multiplication rule for thirds on the numerator and the denominator. That's the other way. You should end up with 2. Moving on to part D. We've got three terms over here. The 7 is a prime number, hence square root of 7 is in its simplest form. You can't simplify further. Now, I'm going to look at the first and the second term. Over here we have 28. You can write 28 as a product of 7 and 4. Over here we have 63. You can write 63 as a product of 7 and 9. Going back to the first term. 4 is our square number in this product. Going back to the second term, 9 is our square number in this particular product. Now we can use the multiplication rule for thirds to simplify the first and the second term. Square root of 7 times 4 can be split into square root of 7 multiplied by square root of 4 minus 2. Square root of 7 times 9 can be split into the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 7 plus square root of 7. Now, the square root of 4 is just 2. I can bring that to the front and write 2 square root 7 minus the square root of 9 is 3. We take 2 and we multiply by 3 to give us 6 square root 7 plus square root 7. The first term, second term and third term are like terms. Each of these terms are proportional to square root 7. Hence, we can simplify. 2 take away 6 is minus 4 plus 1, okay, which is minus 3. So the final answer is minus 3 square root 7. Minus 3 square root 7 is in its simplest form. Moving on to part E. 80, 20 and 45 are not prime numbers. So potentially we can simplify square root 80, square root 20 and square root 45. Let's start off with the first term. 80 can be written as a product of, for example, 4 and 20. Okay, 4 is our square number. Minus, let's look at the second term. 20 can be written as a product of 5 and 4. 4 is our square number. Plus, let's have a look at the third term. 45 can be written as a product of 9 and 5. 9 is our square number. Now we can use the multiplication rule for thirds on each of these terms. Let's start off with the first term. We have square root 4 times 20 can be split into square root 4 multiplied by square root 20 minus, let's look at the second term, square root of 4 times 5 can be split into square root of 4 
multiplied by square root of 5. The third term, square root of 9 can be split into the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 5. Right, now, square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6 square root 20. Minus square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root 5. Plus square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Square root 5. Now 5 is a prime number. Hence Minus 4 square root 5 is in its simplest form. 15 square root 5 is in its simplest form. 20 is not a prime number, so potentially we can simplify square root 20. 20 can be split into the product 4 times 5. Then we have minus 4 square root 5 plus 15 square root 5. I can split square root 4 times 5 into a product of square root 4 multiplied by square root 5 minus 4 square root 5 plus 15 square root 5 square root of 4 is just 2 2 times 6 is 12 so 12 square root 5 minus 4 square root 5 plus 15 square root 5 now these three terms are like terms because each of the terms are proportional to square root 5. So I can simplify this. 12 take away 4 is 8. 8 plus 15 is 23. So the final answer is 23 square root 5. That there is in its simplest form. Moving on to example number 2. Expand and simplify part A and part B. Let's start with part A. Square root of 5 multiplied by 3 is equal to 3 square root 5. Square root of 5 multiplied by negative square root 3 is equal to negative square root 3 square root 5. So the first term is 3 square root 5. The second term, we can use a multiplication rule for sets. Square root 3 multiplied by square root 5 can be written as square root of 3 times 5. So we have 3 square root 5 minus square root 15. Moving on to part B. We have double brackets here now. 7 multiplied by 2 is equal to 14. 7 multiplied by positive square root 11 is equal to positive square root 11. Negative square root 11 multiplied by 2 is equal to negative 2 square root 11. And the negative square root 11 multiplied by square root 11 is equal to negative 11. Remember, if you have square root a and you square it, that's equal to a. And square root a in bracket squared is equivalent to square root a multiplied by square root a. So this particular fact can be used to simplify square root 11 times square root 11, which is just 11. Okay, now we say to ourselves, can we simplify this? The answer is yes. 14 take away 11 is just 3. 7 square root 11 and negative 2 square root 11 are like terms. Each of these terms are proportional to square root 11. So we can do 7 take away 2, which is positive 5, and then square root 11. Here is an exam style question. Simplify square root 75 minus square root 12, giving your answer in the form a square root 3, where a is an integer. Right, let's have a look at this particular problem. First of all, 75 is not a prime number, 12 is not a prime number. So potentially, square root 75 and square root 12 can be simplified. Let's have a look at the first term. 75 can be written as a product of 25 multiplied by 3. 25 is our square number. Minus 12 can be written as a product of 4 and 3. 4 is our square number. Now we're going to use a multiplication rule for thirds to split the first term 
into two parts and split the second term into two parts, starting off with the first term. We can write square root of 25 square root of 3 minus, for the second term we can write square root of 4 square root of 3. Now the square root of 25 is 5, so we have 5 square root 3 minus the square root of 4 is 2, so we have 2 square root 3. These two terms are like terms because each of the terms are proportional to square root 3. So we can do 5 take away 3, which is just 3 square root 3. Hence, we now have the form a square root 3. In this particular case, a is equal to 3. In the exam, if they say state the integer a, you need to state it clearly. All right, but over here, it does not say state the integer a. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.